This is Sophia, this is my wife, and she was born in 1966. She took her life because she couldn't handle the person that I grew into, and then she hung herself, and I got up early in the morning and left, and my 12-year-old son walked into the bathroom and seen his mother hanging in the bathroom. My wife died of not alcoholism, but living with an alcoholic. I remember I was probably 10 years old. We were swimming on the old wooden pier in St Kilda. We remember being very hungry that day. And me and my brother jumped into the water and we collected the mussels off the pier. So I knew we were going from that point with these bag of mussels back to an empty house that it wasn't a normal thing to be doing. So I said to my brother at that time to make myself feel good and for my brother to give him hope, I just looked up at this building and I said, when I'm a big boy, I'm going to live up there. Only a few weeks ago we had the Melbourne Grand Prix here and I was driving past and all these guys were all having a few drinks. They looked at me in the car, they looked at the number plate, looked at me driving it and they go, where'd you steal that from mate? And they laughed. And I looked at them and I thought, you just still fucking can't accept if Aboriginal people can be successful, we can't have these things. That some people just can't accept it in this country. G'day, how are ya? You know, I'm talking to my lady friend out there, just walked in. Yeah, See this one here, this is called Grandmother's uh, Story. And all the round represents water and the different colours, like that red for the land, yellow for the sun and white for the spirit. This thing here, I wanted all the young kids to learn about the culture. Like that? Like that. I invented it, yeah. Yeah. But you can play it as well. So we packaged it up like that, and this is going to be sold in all the airports, all the international airports, and at the Melbourne Museum as well. I started when I was about 10, I think I was. We used to live around in this area in boarding houses, and Dad would get drunk, he'd have a bottle of Mac Williams cream sherry. Me and my brother would be in there, my little sister. And then when he goes to sleep and passes out, we'd have a little swig of the, the bottle, and that's where it got me from that time, from the age of 10. It's been the European genes for thousands of years. In our culture, in this country, what, what probably 50, 60, 70 years we've been drinking. So our bodies, I don't think, is adjusted to it properly. Because we're so spiritually connected to the land, you put that spirit in your system, it takes away your natural spirit. I'm glad I had the opportunity, through something higher than myself, to take that craving away. And that's when it happened for me on the corner of Hoddle and Victoria Street on the 5th of August, 1993. So I uh, do a lot of welcome to countries. I pay my respects to the traditional people of the land, the Yurudjuri people, and I play the Yadaki. Do you ever get tired? Not really, I get pumped. No, no, I, I start to get a little bit tired because I, um, so that happens and then this is happening. The phone, that's my daughter ringing me now, you know, like, hey dad, how much you got daddy? <laughs> nah, she's all right, she's a beautiful little girl. I hope I got the fucking energy to say the right with things, but I'm so fucked. Hello. G'day Sue, how are you? Living in that environment where I come from and growing through that time to where I am today, it started for me when I was just, you know, I had to get my confidence built up first. And that started with me selling my boomerangs down at the St Kilda Market. And someone would come up and look at the boomerang and ask me a question about it, and I, and I couldn't even look at them. And as I solved the first boomerang, and then solved the 10th the boomerang, and the 100th boomerang, I'd become more confident in what I was doing. And then I had the opportunity to start playing the didgeridoo, I've had performances on stage with Stevie Wonder. I'm playing the didgeridoo and he's singing Superstitious. When I was introduced to the social elites and the corporates and the governments, I felt a bit uncomfortable 
and I felt a bit embarrassed on what I was going to say when I opened my mouth. When I come here, I walk in like I'm equal to everybody here because of my culture. My culture has given me all these opportunities to do all of this because I put the bottle down and picked up the paintbrush. So that's the man with a spear and a boomerang. This is a woman with a digging stick and a cool woman. They're coming together to protect water. The Gawana is on a journey for love. And we're gonna take this painting to Shepparton and then we're gonna fill it in with all the dots. And that's what's gonna complete the painting. That is the totem of the turtle. So the turtle's going home because the community now needs to get back to the basic things. What Stan's doing in Shepparton is pretty amazing in looking at the health and well-being of our young people because really they are the assets for our future. What does spirituality mean to a kid now when they're feeling very angry? But kids are desperate now. They disassociate and they're disconnected to a lot of their cultural needs of growing up or they not have the stamina or the strength culturally because they've been so disconnected. Done my journey from Melbourne back to Shepparton 30 years later and it's time to come back to the younger men and women of this country here in Shepparton, the Yorta Yorta people, to remember where we come from and never forget that. I'm just crazy about you babe. When you meet your maker, he's going to say to you, how many people did you help? Not how many pair of shoes did you own. Ego stands for edging God out. And there's no man or woman can make this a sunny day the way it is right now. So, got to get rid of your ego, your self-pity, and your, um, yeah, your bullshit. My son now has got a problem with ice. This is one of the reasons why I'm here to try and put a, um, an end to this ice epidemic because I've experienced the effects of ice and alcohol. None of my family's lived over 50, yeah? And now my son's got a problem with it as well. I still love him as my son, but I'm not gonna put up with the behavior of an ice addict. And what we're gonna do is get our community strong first for our elders and then try and get the younger ones to make them strong. But you gotta get to the core of it anyway. Why are you using it in the first place? When a man or a woman's got no direction, they make wrong decisions. How you doing, Hunk? Welcome home. Yeah, good to be home, Carl. I've seen a lot of stuff happen in this town, and I left, I come back, and when we grew up here, we didn't even go to school. You know, we'd run around doing burglaries around here, robbing people. and you know, drinking and going down the lake fight and, and never got a lot of my mates any good. A lot of them went to jail. Hey, I'm my cars. Hey, not cars, nephew, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's poor my sort of discipline. And, well, my cousins were sort of drinking and drugging and getting in trouble. And yeah. through sport, I was able to sort of get away from that. Some of, some of my mates that I knocked around with, with then, mm. you know, they're in jail now. Mm -hmm. um, so they've gone down that path. Then, you know, being in Melbourne, playing in the AFL, you know, I was able to meet yourself. And yeah. you, know, you helped me a lot with my spirituality. It helped me go a long way yeah. with the person I am today. And you know, I've come from the same environment mm. and I was able to get out of that. So that's something that you know, I'm really big on, just trying to inspire the young ones to you know, go out there and, and follow their dreams. <laughs> come together and feel safe, it's to come and have a, have a yarn around a fire here, share experiences, a strength and a hope for each other. That we don't continue to die at ages of 15 and 16 and 25 and 30 and try and educate each other about the yeah. after effects of the drugs and the alcohol that some of us might be taking in our community.
We've paid our respects to the traditional people of the land. Percy, I want to give you this as an uncle from this area, an elder. I want to put this on your face, brother. And when you wear this on your face, you wear it with pride. Because when we walked on this land for thousands of years, we had a lot of pride. It's a very significant day today. This is the start of something that's good for you young fellas to get strength within yourselves. And whatever passion you've got in yourselves, go out and do it. Whether it's football, whether you want to be an artist, whether you want to build houses or be doctors or lawyers, whatever you want to do, you can do whatever you want to do. I've come from the streets, I've come from nothing, so I know what it's like to not have much. But the longer I stayed sober and worked harder, these things started to come. But it, I, I don't forget where I come from. I don't forget living in the empty house and being hungry, collecting muscles off an old pier. What makes you complete is your culture, you know? That's the number one thing for me. It's not the car and the mansion and the, and the money in the bank. It's about, you know, giving back to the community. That's the real richness.